Welcome to Whatever Works, our unique fortnightly podcast in which we talk about whatever works in our lives and in the lives of our community members. Find us at whateverworks.works. And why not join our community? Simply search for Whatever Works at mewe.com and get stuck in. Good evening. This is the BBC welcoming you to another stunning episode of Whatever Works podcast. <laughs> All right, John. Mr. Salmon's just been teasing me, haven't you, sir? Uh, <laughs> you're a right posh dude, you are. I'm being accused of being a posh git, everybody. Right, I'll, I'll do the f- show like this then today, shall I? <laughs> How would that be? <laughs> yeah, you'll have to now ed- remember to edit that out, you, <laughs> you f- Right, start the show, Ted, before they turn <laughs> off before we've begun. Right. <laughs> Whatever works, it's show 193. It's the middle of September in 2023. And we will talk to you for the next hour, probably, about all sorts of claptrap that we normally do. I've got a mouthful of chocolate-covered raisins, so forgive me if I'm eating at the same time. Whatever works, stop works. They wouldn't do that on the BBC, you know. (laughs) Rather, rather. (laughs) Whatever works, dot works is our website. If anyone ever goes there, do you ever go there? I do indeed. Yes, I do. Oh, I, whenever I need to remember when I bought something or to oh, yeah. look to see who brought what onto the show and when. It's fascinating, folks. Have a look because it, it is a trip down memory lane, definitely. Oh, yeah, lots of links in there. Um, and also you can find anything else you want to at tedsalmon.com, audio podcasts, MeWe links, all the rest of it. And MeWe being in question, I would encourage you, if you're not already there, to join us there and chat about things and tell us whatever works in your life and what doesn't. AidenBell.com is where you'll find Aiden, who is running out of bookings for being Santa at Christmas. <laughs> or is he? Ho, ho, ho. Oh, you'll have to wait and see, won't you? Stay on my nice list. <laughs> Rather, I should say, sir. <laughs> Jolly hockey sticks. Now... Um, The weather has broken. Well, it had not until today. The weather yesterday, it was just absolutely delightful. I had no windows open, no doors open, and I was just so happy. Um, Today, halfway through the morning, the bleeding sun's come out again. And so I'm roasted. I thought, this is the end. In fact, last night I put my air conditioner away. I thought, right, that's it. Tempting fate, but there you go. And sure enough, anyway... The good news is that at night it's not muggy and horrible, but apparently it's still muggy where you are. Yeah, well, it's so hard to say because as as you've explained, you know, you can change on a sixpence and you get up in the morning and you expect one thing and then before you know it, you've got something else. I certainly concur with you. We we certainly agree on disliking the the uber hot weather, but I think Mm. it's the, the point at which we're happy that changes. I'm quite happy when it gets down to about sort of 20, 21, 22 degrees. You want it to be down to about minus 50. I think um, my 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 mark is between um, five and ten at night and ten and fifteen in the day, and then I'm all right. You are a but polar bear, sir. I've the said sun, it before. <laughs> the, the sun being um, out from behind clouds in my living situation, as I've said a hundred and one times, makes a huge difference. Though, much different to most people. Right, that's the last um, chocolate covered raisin. Thank goodness for that. I was beginning... In my gob. <laughs> I was beginning to wonder if I'd have to fill. Right, carry on, sir. I, I would I would just give you a, 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 an end of season, hopefully. Shout out to the Igenix mobile air conditioning unit, whoever, because it's just been worth its weight in gold these last, this last week or so. Really, really nice. Um, I know that it's not very eco-friendly, and I don't use it unless I really have to. Um, but it's just such a delight to use it. I really recommend strongly anyone. The only the only fiddle is that you've got to pipe it out of a window, um, unless you you know get a hole cut in the wall or something. Um, but in a in a static home, that's a bit difficult. But anyway, yeah, really really good. Uh, have you got one yet? One what? An air conditioning. Oh, an air conditioning unit. unit. No, I mean I was just thinking to myself. Attention. Were you <laughs> no, eating I was paying attention. Now? I was. I was. <laughs> Yeah, waiting for you to finish your chocolate, sir. No, I, I was thinking, I did look up your machine when I was considering air conditioning units for here to take care of my mother. Um, That's right. And then, deci- no, I decided we, we, we've dodged the bullet this year. But, it, yeah. you know, I mean, this year, 
when you think about it, out in Europe, they had the most horrendous. They were in the oh, 40s. Yeah. And so we did indeed dodge that bullet here. So if, if we start to go up again next year, I may well follow suit and buy the same machine that you have or something similar. Yeah, yeah. I, I recommend it. I really do. Um, but, yeah, it, because it's, I think it's because it's mobile, it feels like it's not permanent and you it's like a it's like a fix and it's not like you're being really really badly eco unfriendly yes yes yeah it's a, you've got a good excuse is what you mean indeed right i see this week that the first class stamps have gone up oh that's right I yes I, I don't know why we're reporting that on i suppose it's whatever works um one pound 25 they are now up from one pound 10 and it doesn't seem like five minutes ago that they were um you know they went up last time yeah however I was talking to my dad about this and he still says to me, well, you think about it and you post a letter in Land's End and send it to John O'Groats. They get it there the next day. He says, that's probably worth a fiver or even more. So he has a he has a fair point, I suppose. It, it, it's a cheap service, um, which historically has been kept cheap. Uh, second class staying at 75p. I think I last bought a stamp in about 2008, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if you think about it, Ted, if you wanted to send something and the Royal Mail didn't exist, you got the choice of using a more expensive parcel delivery service or getting mm. in a car and taking it yourself. So yeah, yeah. I, think I'm with, I think I'm with your dad there. And, yeah. and again, it's each to their own. I mean, my mother and I fairly frequently send letters and, and, and receive. My mother receives letters most days. Um, I've even got used now to this new system of prepping parcels to be collected from home, which felt yes. very bizarre at first. Had one collected yesterday, in fact. Um, you know, that's beginning to feel normal to me now. Uh, the idea that you don't actually have to... Again, it's the same as I, I whinged about last week. You don't need to... You can stay at home and get fat and don't have to go anywhere. Well, now if you want to send a, even a heavy parcel, you can package it all up at home. You can go yeah. online. You can have them pick it up for you from your front door. So, yeah, I Fanny, think it's... A, it, sorry, you, you were going to say? I was just going to explete and say, Fanny's your aunt. Well, there we are. And, 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 and um, I forgot his name. Trevor is your father. It's going to be slick there until I forgot your dad's name. Trevor is your father. And I agree with him. I think it, it, it yeah, is yeah. a service that's worth paying for. Indeed, yes. There you go, then. Right. Feedback from the last show, which was indeed two weeks ago. What we got? We've got Chris Kelly on the Coon Rikon Piran, Piran, Piranha, uh, which <laughs> Chris says respond. It was responding to my post. That's right. Oh, yeah. About potato peelers. Uh, Chris says... As you have stated, Aidan, that you'll relent and go manual with your spud peeler, I wholeheartedly recommend this. That being the Kuhn Rikon Pin Pen. I can't pronounce this word. Pirna. Um, yeah, I decided that there wasn't a, a suitable gadget potato. Piranha. Piranha. Oh, that's right. It's a fish, isn't it? It's dirt. It's the fish, it's isn't it? It's a fish it's, with them teeth. It's that silent H that's throwing me. Yeah, piranha. <laughs> so um, Chris Kelly advocates peeling potatoes with a piranha um, and says, I've had mine for many years, maybe a decade by now, and it's still sharp. The best thing about it, he says, apart from being very comfortable, is that the blade has serrations that pierce the skin, yeah, your own as well do. as the potatoes, if you're not careful, <laughs> mm. making it glide through the peeling task. It's a little more expensive than the average. Average, but given its longevity, I'd say it's worth it. And then Chris goes on to say the Swiss firm also does a vertical version, the Kuhn Rikon Piranha, I can say it now, swivel peeler, <laughs> although it is currently unavailable from our favourite store. I do, however, strongly urge you, says Chris, not to get one with a straight blade. I've had dozens of those and can assure you that they are like a larder compared to a Porsche in relative performance to the Piranha Blade with its many teeth on the Kuhn Rickon Peelers. And now I know why it's called a Piranha Blade, because it's got lots of teeth on it. I'm catching on. <laughs> The um, my mum's got one of those with the, one of these piranha thingies, yeah. and he, he, he's absolutely right. You've got to be really careful with it. If you, it's so incredibly sharp, you, you touch your skin and you, it tears it off. Ouch! But anyway, what, what did you buy in the end, or well, didn't you? I did, but I have to say, I'm afraid. I sort of thought to myself. It's a potato peeler. So I couldn't bring myself to do all the sort of YouTube and, and reading research that we might do if we're buying a piece of you know tech kit, for instance. I just went yeah, into a yeah. shop and I bought a potato peeler. It felt quite satisfying, actually. And each to their own, Chris. I'm afraid I did get a straight blade one because that's what I've used before. And I'm very happy with the one that I've got. My goodness, it's chalk and cheese compared to the old one, which my mother and I worked out is about 50 years old. Yes, you heard that right, <laughs> folks. Five zero. Um, and it's made by OXO. Uh, of the Hurrah! OXO of the, we, of like the OXO, yeah. we have the gravy cubes I presume um, yeah and it works very well and I'm very happy with it so 
a, a happy I end. I don't know. Surely that's not the same company, is it? I don't know. We have, we have, however, covered OXO stuff on the show before. Lots of different stuff. Household kind of stuff. And you, you remember those jugs? and Yes, my, I do indeed, yes. M- my mini dustpan and brush. That's and right. The, the, the wiper for inside the shower doors. And the, the OXO stuff is really good. I like it. I think yeah. it must be the, 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 the gravy people. I mean, you can't have two companies called OXO. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Let's throw it I out there. Know. Who knows? Chris also um, posted a um, diagram yeah. in the Mimi group this week about coffees and what, the, how you're supposed to mix it. Now, I, I, I'm a bit like you, is that I always kind of make it the same way. But it was interesting to look at this diagram and see which it, which it, you know, what I was doing. And it seems that the way that I'm doing it, given the measures and the way in which I've um, compartmentalised the, the layers, if you like is that I'm making latte. I thought I was making cappuccino, but cappuccino has got less milk in it and more foam, whereas what I'm doing is less foam and more milk. So I I think I'm a latte person. Uh, Which of those suits what you're doing, do you think? Well, looking at this chart, I don't know, because I don't know the difference between steamed milk and milk foam. I mean, I froth the milk and I pour it into the coffee and moreover, I stir it. So, and when I receive, if I order a coffee in a coffee shop, the first thing I do is stir it. Um, So I don't know. I do know what, I mean, I think that (laughs) with no disrespect to Chris at all, of course, there was wine snobbery and now there's coffee snobbery. I mean, I, you know, make a, make an espresso, put some milk in it and get alive. (laughs) I quite like the look of the mocha. I'm not sure how you put the hot chocolate in, though. Presumably you buy some cocoa. Chris, how do you get hot chocolate inside your mocha? Yeah. I want to know. I mean, I have, an, as you know, I've bought an awful lot of coffees in my life. That should be a song. I bought an awful lot of coffees in my life. And, um, or jingle. They, you know, you sometimes receive a coffee that looks like one of those sand sculptures with the different colours and different layers. And, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you've had this experience, Ted, you receive a coffee and you it indeed looks like the mocha does in this picture with different coloured layers. And you sort of feel you don't want to disturb it with a spoon or with drinking yeah. it because it's such a work of art. Like, um, a, like, a, like a B-52. Y- really good. Yeah, yeah. but I think... In in the end, when you stir it and drink it, you know, I wonder how many of us could actually tell if we had a blind taste test and I said, right, this one's a latte, this one's a cappuccino, this one's an Americano. You know, could you tell which is which? I really don't know. A good question. I, do you see that one at the bottom? Affogato. Never heard of that. Ice cream on the bottom, espresso on the top. That looks nice, doesn't it? You know why it's at the bottom <laughs> as well? It's because they, they didn't remember to put it on and then they said, oh, I forgot. I put this one on at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, nice chart. Thank you, Chris. That was really helpful. We're continuing the coffee theme here. Philip Ray brings us his new Agia Anima, £499 in the UK, which is a very nice looking bean to cup coffee machine. Philip says, my Nespresso Latissima and brew chamber was leaking and I couldn't get the replacement part here in Malaysia. So I thought it was a good time to upgrade to a bean to cup machine. It's always a good time to upgrade to a bean to cup machine, Philip. (laughs) Always. Now I have a Gagia Anima. What a lovely name. It's Mm. quite basic and will only make espresso or lungo. What on earth is a lungo? That wasn't in Chris's chart, was it? A lungo. Ted will look up lungo while I read this. It's quite basic. It will only make espresso and lungo, but it has a steam wand for the latte, etc. I can recommend it as it makes a great espresso. I am going to have to delve into YouTube for instructions as my first attempt at frothing the milk went all over the counter. <laughs> yeah, we've all been yeah, there, Philip. There, there is a there is a fine art, isn't there? Yeah. As you know yourself, you you've got to get the just on the edge of the, the the top the top of the milk. Otherwise, if it's too far, it spurts out, or if it's too low, it doesn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lovely word that I learned when I was writing the lyrics for my show Santa Santa, which is pelagic, which comes from the sea and fish. And apparently it means that little zone sort of that's neither quite under the water nor out of the water. The very sort of. And I always feel that that's the zone you have to find when you're frothing milk. You've got to find that pelagic zone that's neither under nor over and then get it spinning around. That's why, um, as you know, my clever, clever machine does it all by itself. But you do have the option to do it manually, which I will often do because it's a Mm. damn sight better. Indeed, yes. Right, now I've looked up Lungo. Oh, yes. Stand by. Ita- Lungo is Italian for long. Um, it's a coffee drink made by using an espresso machine to make an Italian-style coffee. Short black, so a single espresso shot with more water, generally twice as much, resulting in a larger coffee, 
a longo. That's an Americana. That's oh, what it? an Americana is. It's an espresso with hot water. water. Yeah, but it's, it's um, more water. Where's the water one in his chart? There isn't one. Where's um, milk, milk, cream? Oh, no, there's not a water Ted, one I think our there, listeners are going to sleep. Let's move on. <laughs> 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 Robert McCrown says he says to f- forget about these fancy ones and go for a frother. He recommends the Andrew James electric milk frother and heater water jug machine thingy for 33 quid from our favourite shop. Double walled insulation, non-stick coating, automatic switch off, foaming attachment, 360 degree base. So I guess that means it's like a kettle that you can lift it off and stick it down. Um, I used to have a hand frother. I can't remember what happened to it, though. I think it got lost somewhere. Um, but I've, apart from that, I've never used one that's just a, a frother. Have you? I seem to vaguely remember we once had something similar to this from John Lewis that was a machine, was like a kettle jug thing that you put milk uh, in and it turned it into froth. Uh, so, um... Anyway, thank you to Robert and to Philip for those um, bits of feedback. Charles. Thank you. And dear listeners, we'll do our best not to say the word coffee again for the rest of the podcast. (laughs) Ian Barton, we're still transferring fluids, though. He brings us a Katsu diesel Trump diesel transfer pump slinky link yeah thank you sir thank you see what i did there 39 pounds for a transfer (laughs) pump ian says this is listed on amazon as a diesel pump but it works fine with water a few months ago the wooden sleepers under our heating oil tank were steadily decaying we needed to get a new tank which was installed nearby on a proper concrete slab but we then had to pump about 2500 liters of oil from the old tank into the new one I had borrowed a transfer pump from a friend in the past, but it was broken, so I bought this one from Amazon. You need to buy a pipe to connect either end, but don't use the one advertised on Amazon because it's the wrong diameter. And then everything (laughs) went to plan, and we emptied the tank without any spillage. We have since used the pump, after washing it out, to fill a 2,400 litre drinking cube. What is a Drinking cube, says Aidan. There they are, something else. We're learning today, Ted. Ted will now look up drinking cube <laughs> while I finish this sentence. Uh, Ian has said we, we've since used the pump after washing it out to fill a 2,400 litre drinking cube and we are about to use it again to dry to drain the duck's bath. I like the sound of this. This is a sort of multi-purpose pump that, as Ian has proven, pumps not only diesel as advertised but also water. I'm thinking, oh, I want one of these, but do I need one? Well, I did actually have fun once when I had to empty my entire pond and that took me literally hours and hours with buckets i could have done with it then 39 quid eh? right listen i've stalled long enough now you will tell us what a drinking cube is ted i won't because i I can't (laughs) there's references there's references online to it being a a, a drinking game of sorts um but i i do wonder if that might be a typo an ian typo and the word cube is wrong i don't know i i can't seem to find okay I, i hope it's not a drinking game with a pump that could be dangerous. <laughs> OK, Ian, Ian what's a drinking cube? Yes, let us know. Yeah. Right, I'm drinking my tea now. Oh, well, it's While... your turn. Off you. I do, I might have I got to fill dead air for you? No, no, it's just that it, it, what I meant was it wasn't copy. Hey, should we play that? <laughs> do, 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 Vision on. You can interrupt at any time. Do, 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 do. Right, Robert McCrown is back on his car headrest hook which he got from £1.29 from AliExpress, or you can get them from Amazon UK at £8.99, for those not wanting to wait six weeks for it. <laughs> um, it's great if you have a small shopping bag that would fall over in the boot, and it doubles up as a clamp for a phone um, thingy holder on the back for people in the rear seat. So this thing, you you hook onto the, um, the, 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 the pole that comes down from your headrest to the chair, and it um, on the back, it's got a hook, and you and as as Robert says, you can hang bags on it that you don't want to fall over. Very nice. But it's also got an integrated um, clamp thingy, like we got on those tripod um, yes. what's it's Aiden, and you can clamp your phone in it. So people in the sitting in the back seat can clamp their phone in there and watch uh, Faulty Towers while you drive along, and it keeps them quiet. So anyway, yeah, um, a nice little kind of gadgety thing from Robert, which I'm sure will be very help- helpful. As my friend Ted Salmon would have said, fiendish. I really like this. I did look it up and I'm really impressed with this. Yeah, very nice idea. I wonder who bought it. 
I wonder who bought the Yin San 120-piece precision screwdriver set. But I do thank you anyway. 15 quid. Um, well, it was when I checked. The RRP is 22 quid, but it's um, it was 15 quid when I last checked. A mini magnetic screwdriver um, kit. Phillips slotted Torx posi drive, blah, 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 blah. A million and one different um, uh, screwdriver heads. And it's a bit like those um, Xiaomi ones we were talking about, and I got in. Except that it just seems much bigger and better and with loads more stuff going on in it. Um, all sorts of attachments. It's even got a um, round the corner bendy attachment so if you've got a really difficult to get to screw in a corner somewhere you can do that and look at all those um, screw heads in there there's just tons and tons and tons of them I can't imagine there'd be anything in there that would be um, not really you know you would, would not fit what you're trying to do there's a um, a plunger thingy which you are you see, see part of this kit i think is designed for people that are taking mobile phones apart um because there's a, a, a little thingy to try and lever off the screen of a phone so i mean but laying that aside you don't have to use it for that it'll be useful still for 101 other things i really like the look of this and it is still 14 15 quid um and i think it would you know whoever's bought that um good for you that looks really nice can you say that? Damn you, Ted Salmon and the mystery buyer. I've just put one in my shopping basket. <laughs> I love this. It, and it's got, yeah, as you say, this sort of suction thing, you know, that people use for carrying windows, only smaller. And yeah. three other tools, I wouldn't know what they are, but pokey, scrapey, twisty, bendy things. I love this. I've ordered one. Yeah. I'm, have you? I, yeah, because I've been after a mini screwdriver set. And I'm going to give this a shot. This is fabulous. Excellent. Good. OK, then. Well, thank you very much, anyway, who, whoever bought that um, from my affiliate link. The affiliate link is at tinyurl.com forward slash Amazon Ted UK. You can buy from there. Just head into that URL. It makes no difference to you at all. I don't know who's buying, but they give me a few pennies. And um, I just know that they I just know what's been bought, not who's been buying it. So, um, yes, indeed. Well done to you. Good choice. Heads top tips, heads top tips, heads top tips. Fiendish for the second time, and Ahmed Bieber's has brought <laughs> a fabulous idea. Uh, a DIY phone stand, says Ahmed. Use an old cassette tape case to prop up your phone. Um, oh, yeah, I remember this. I mean, however hard I try and however many cassette tapes I throw away, I'm still finding them <laughs> about the house. So I'm sure most people probably of our generation and, and, and interests and technical whatever will probably have kicking around the house somewhere in a box or in the loft old cassette tapes. Uh, so just take the box, reverse it. So open the box and reverse it backwards. And lo and behold, you have a phone stand. Um, I don't yeah. vouch that it's a very good phone stand and it's not terribly attractive. But if you need a phone stand, there it is. You could paint it. You could you could you, put you, pretty flowers all over it. You could. You could super glue it so it stays where it is and fi fix it all up. Night, good shout, Ahmed. Thank you. you nice could, in fact, if, if you still had one of the inserts, you could then use that to, to, to pretty it up too. You could indeed, yeah. Ted, you see. Good You're full indeed. of ideas today. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, I want one other thing with a, a Ted's top tip is that when you've got a camping chair, um, Gareth Williams, take note, before you sit in them, check that they're open properly and that they're not too crap to sit on. This week, my dad had a nasty fall in one. Um, he had. They, they've got these two little camping chairs that they that they're really kind of flimsy and small and light so they can chuck them in the car with them which is fair enough but he actually fell backwards he's 87 years old he oh. fell backwards off his chair and hit his shoulder and head on the garage um, door and fortunately he was all right no injuries and it was all right but um he certainly could have done a, done himself a nasty t turn did you ask him who the prime minister is and what day of the week it was <laughs> I saw I saw him going down on this thing, and I saw I saw it collapsing, and the backs the back legs just w came forward, and I, I I just couldn't get there quick enough to, to yeah. rescue him. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he's um, he's okay. But it turned out that when we inspected this chair more closely, there is actually a little lock thingy on the back seat, the back the, the back of the seats. Ah. And mum and dad had never <laughs> known that, never seen them, never used them up until now. I think they've just been really really lucky anyway my tip my top tip is if you've got these little camping chairs particularly light and flimsy ones check the mechanism and don't fall backwards 
Wow, well, I'm, I'm very pleased that that story ends with your father being okay, of course. Still using, still using. I am still using, with great pleasure, my Mercury battery tester. Um, February 2020, show 101, which I found out by looking on whateverworks.works. Hey. Um, this cost me £10.49. and pence. It was actually brought onto the show back then by Andrew Worden. Um, and he brought one on, as, which was by Mercury. And I actually bought exactly the same thing, but with a different name. My, mine is by Dlyfl, D-L-Y-F-U-L-L. Um, but it does exactly the same thing. And it's still working fine. Uh, it still tests batteries for me and I use it mm, occasionally. Uh, it's got the same battery in it running it that it's had since I got it, which I'm just opening up to see is a AAA battery, Duracell, and it works fine. I'm very happy with it. It does the job it says on the tin and I'm still using it and recommend it. Excellent. Well done. I'm going to bring the GTEC Air Ram Mark II, the vacuum cleaner, lightweight cordless upright vacuum cleaner, which I got in December 17 and it was on whatever works 49. It's a really lightweight little um, vacuum cleaner, but it's really quite good and powerful, easy to maintain. It's got a built-in battery, um, allegedly with 40 minutes runtime, although I, I, I can't say that I've ever tested that continuously. Um, Mum's got one as well. Someone else we know has got one as well. Everyone's still on the original battery. It doesn't seem to, to kind of um, wear out. You can charge the battery in situ or you can take it out and charge it with a supply charger. It's a lithium ion battery. It's got a torch on the front, headlights. So for people with kind of dodgy eyesight or who oh, like nice. doing the vacuum cleaning at <clears> night, you can see what you're doing. Oh, very nice. And yeah, it's not the most powerful vacuum in the world, but it's great for older people, I think, because it's so light. Um, it's currently 230 quid, but they were 199, so it's not the cheapest, but um, it's certainly lasting well. And if if you if you spread that 199 quid over the what is it? Seven. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, seven 22, years. 23. Yeah, seven years. Then actually, that's that's <clears> really really good value, isn't it? So, yeah, so the, the G-Tech Air Ram Mark II. Yeah, I think seven years is, is good going, and if it's still going strong, nice one. Pip Tomlinson brings us the e GT15SL electric scooter. Pip says, I've had my electric scooter for three years now after reporting the purchase on whatever works. 5,200 miles later, and it's still going strong. <laughs> It's getting me all over the city, and when compared to the cost of public transport, it has already paid for itself. It cost €1,300, which at today's exchange is about 1118 of your finest pounds, so it's about a grand. It has a top speed of 37 miles per hour and a wow. tested range of 25 miles on a charge. So far, the Samsung battery inside has held up well, and I haven't noticed any degradation. As always, a helmet and pads are non-negotiable. Thirty-seven yes. miles an hour. I agree with that. Wow. That is thirty-seven. Is uh, yeah. That, I mean, I would feel a bit uncomfortable stood on a scooter at thirty-seven miles. So good on you, Pip. <laughs> hey, somebody asked him that in the in the group, and he said that he doesn't ride it around at that speed, but right. um, it can do it. And this is one of the reasons why it's, I think it's banned in in UK because it goes too fast and. The, the the authorities can see lots of accidents. Obviously, people in Spain are behaving more reliably than in the UK. I'd love one of these. In my situation, it would just be brilliant. In the winter, when my moped won't start, jump on that, scoot across the town. Brilliant. But we're not allowed to. You see, you're the only person who would advocate using one of these in the winter when everyone else would say it's much too cold. <laughs> Airspeed as well. No, 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 no. I'm not using it in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I know, good shout, Pip, and um, good for you. Nice one. Um, right, Jim Powell is last in this particular section of Still Using with his Anchor 6-port USB charger. I've linked in the show to a show notes to a more modern version because his one is uh, now not available. Um, I'm still using my 6-port Anchor USB charger, he says, that I've had for an absolute age now. It only does slow charging, so showing its age, but as I only really charge overnight, it's not really an issue. It drives my wireless charger stand by the bedside. It's been an absolute trooper. 
I tend to take it with me when I'm travelling for work. And yes, we've got some of these. In fact, I think we've got three of them. I've got one right in front of me now, and I'm looking at it. And it, and it, it's just, it just goes on. As he, as he says, you don't want to try and power um, very thirsty yeah. things with it. But just for running, my, you know, um, peripherals with it, it's absolutely great. Um, yes, and I agree. Good shout, Jim. And it looks lovely too. Indeed. On the last show, you brought some hand sanitizer that you was it are still using, I think. But oh, um, yeah. uh, forget the make, forget the name now, which is naughty of me. But I, I certainly agree with it. Oh, dear it dear the same dear. Well, what's it called then? Oh, what's, dear it called? what's it called? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but it got me thinking about COVID habits that we all had, and uh, you know, initially COVID um, stipulations that we were sort of required to continue doing, and 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 wondering what what remain as habits and what people are still doing or no longer doing since COVID is no longer a thing. And one habit, as I put on MeWe group, that I cannot get out of, and I'm pleased that I still do, is refusing to touch any doors or surfaces uh, in public conveniences, which is almost a sort of fun challenge now. If When you go in, if it's a pull door, then you grab a bit of your clothing and use that so you don't touch the handle. If it's a push door, you use an elbow to get in. And then once you're inside, you don't touch anything. Anything that gets touched gets touched only through a piece of toilet paper or, or towel. Um, and then the fun part is right at the end, when you've washed your hands and you're ready to leave, you've got to find another bit of paper with which to allow you to open the door to leave. But then if you don't want to be a, a cad, you need to throw that paper away. So you have to try and aim it to the nearest bin or toilet bowl before leaving. So fun with fun with bits of paper trying to get in and out of public toilets. Uh, and that started a short conversation on MeWe. Indeed. So what happens if you need a dump? Do you put paper on the seat? Oh, goodness, yes. I get through half a toilet roll. <laughs> In, in America, I think it was, they started to do these seat covers, didn't they? And people were carrying them around with them. They're like elasticated toilet seat covers. Yes, and I have come across occasionally toilets where they actually have a, a, a complete circle made of toilet paper tissue. Yeah, yeah, that's supposed it. to place right. on the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, t I completely agree with you since COVID. I'm really paranoid about it. And I um, we, we have, it, it, in the park where we have our... Um, uh, the static there's a gate that you've got to open uh, before you um before anyone can drive in oh yeah it's a it's a no uh, traffic kind of uh, measure and um whenever i go and open that gate uh from from people visiting um i uh, i come back and um, sanitize my hands there's another gate which leads to where the the skip is for the rubbish again whenever i touch that gate straight back and wash my hands um, so I think it has been good to encourage us all to be a bit more um, wary of, of, of um, hygiene matters. I think so, too. Do you know, one thing that I always asked during COVID and I still haven't heard since is we were all almost literally cleaning the world for a year. What effect has that had? I'd love to know uh, stats and, and, and data concerning other, other diseases and other irritations and other problems that are caused by dirt and grime. And, and have that, did that go down? Has mm -hmm. our world become a cleaner place because we were all mentally cleaning during COVID? I'm curious. The oceans certainly did. There yes. Was, there was all sorts of reports of um, wildlife uh, resurgences, wasn't there? That's right, yeah. Duncan Robinson is next. I think you need a contactless door opener tool. <laughs> it's five pound ninety five, so it's cheap as chips, and it's a it's a kind of multi purpose tool thingy that you put in your pocket, carry around with you, so you don't have to use a bit of your clothing to open a door. And it looks like it's like very fiendishly shaped and with all sorts of. Have you ever seen one of these? Yeah, there were people making these during COVID and flogging them. Oh, was My it? problem is, OK, you use this to open the door so the germs don't go onto the door and your fingers, they go onto the tool. You then put the tool in your pocket. The next time you put your hand in your pocket, you get the germs that were on the door <laughs> handle in the first place. <laughs> Hopefully it's rubbed off on your cloth by then. Uh... <laughs> On your clothing. I don't know. It just seems to me just a way of transferring germs rather than avoiding right. them. Okay. Well, anyway, it's a nice idea. Um, so thank you, Duncan. Even if 
Um, Aidan thinks it's rubbish. <laughs> Aiden, yeah, sorry, <laughs> Duncan. Ian Watson says, if I'm in a public loo with a pull cord light switch, I always try and reach as high as possible to find uh, a clean yeah. section to touch. Oh, yes, and it's the same even with, 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 with if you have to push to get out of a door. I tend to reach up really, really high or really, really low or press a part of the door that yeah. I think other people haven't. Yes, yes, I'm yeah, with you, yeah. Ian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The games we play. Uh, Pip Tomlinson is last on this one. I hated using hand sanitizer. He says, I used to dry my hands um, out so badly. And in Spain, every single shop had it as you entered. They made you do it during COVID. The problem was that some of the gels were cheap, sticky, gooey and horrible. And I used to get a build up after the third or fourth application. Really don't miss those days. And um, I guess if they had invested in more expensive ones, it wouldn't be so bad. The, the ones, presumably the ones that they had at supermarkets here, which is what I used all the time. I never noticed it being horrible like that so perhaps they spent more money on them in this country than they did in Spain. I do remember I went to Scotland quite soon after Covid and I remember shopping in a high street where they made you do it in every shop and it, we did find some were good and some uh, right. as Pip says were really yeah. nasty and gooey. I remember also laughing because some of them you you put your hand under it and you press it but the stuff shoots out <laughs> at a horizontal angle and flies off into the shop somewhere or hits the, pass the, 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 the customer yeah, behind yeah. you or whatever. The last cheapest chips that you brought on, sir, was the Homand double-sided tape that oh, you were yeah. waxing lyrical about. Yeah. Well, I was so impressed, um, I bought a roll. Ah. Uh, and I concur with you entirely. I actually went for the slightly uber-beefy stuff, the two-millimetre thick, three-centimetre wide, oh, uh, which right. is seven ninety nine. I think yours was a slightly smaller size. Yeah. Um, but just like you, I'm very impressed. I was also impressed with how absolutely, utterly crystal clear it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. be you know, you can see right through the entire t roll of the stuff. Have you but actually as you, used it for anything? I haven't used it in Anglia. Right. No, I okay. just put, pulled off a bit and explored it and played with it. Yeah. And and yeah. as if I concur with everything you've said. It's 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 bloody sticky. It sticks to everything as you're trying to use it. But I also agree that it's one of these clever things that when you want to remove it, you can do so by just pulling it sideways and causing it to contract and stretch. Uh, it can yeah, be yeah. easily removed. So good, good call, sir. I've put it really with my is. rolls of tape, and when I need it, I've got it. I was very impressed with that. Yeah, you're, you're quite right. Um, the tape to beat all tapes, yes. double-sided wise. Ian Barton is last with a classic gun foot shoot error, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he um, and he uh, orates this uh, little scenario. I can't find my car keys. Never mind. Look for them later. Just use the spares. Oh, I always lock the spares in the car to keep them safe. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so he shot himself in the foot. Was the um, was the point there? We we did, yeah. we, we, we locked a car, um, a key in a car once. Um, we were about twenty miles from base. It was a right pain in the ass. Oh, some, we just had to get someone to come out and do it. One of the things we've covered in this shop before, the, the, in this show before, I think Daniel um, Bemis bought it on the show. Was these lockable outdoor key safe thingies? Yes, yes. Um, that's so right. I guess that. I mean, they're only about a tenner. Well, the ones that Daniel had bought, I think, were, were posh Wi-Fi ones or whatever with an app control. But you can buy cheap ones um, and you kind of just screw them to somewhere and, um, you know, you can put your keys in them, I suppose. But, yeah, someone was also saying in the group, however, what's the point of these things? Because you could just, you know, if you really wanted to get in, you could just rip the thing off the wall, which oh, is true. Guilty as charged, my lord. Oh, was that you? That was okay. me. I just said it can't be that difficult to wrench the whole thing yeah. off the wall. Yeah. Well, that, that's that is true, and these things I think are most supposed to be more of a kind of deterrent than anything. And um, you know, I, I, I mean, if if someone wants to break into your place, they're going to get in whatever they, whatever happens, aren't, aren't they? They're going to break a window or something and, and get in. But uh, yeah, just a deterrent, and yeah. it's quite a good idea. I, I do, I do concur. Yes. I want one, I want one, I want one. I want one of those. Have you seen this TikTok video I've linked <laughs> yes, to with this I chair? Have. This you chair strange is strange man. <laughs> oh, that looks so nice. If you watch the video, um it it's this really really comfy looking chair almost like a bean bag but it opens up sit, you prop it up in the, a chair position yeah, it's like a flip phone almost you can lay it down and turn it into a bed and it just looks it, it looks like the most comfortable thing 
in the universe. Now, um, Chris Kelly pointed out in the group that actually this looks very small. This Asian-looking girl who's sat in it is is clearly a very small person. So he and I would need a bigger version. But <laughs> yes. but but, it, but I I just think it looks wonderful. I, I would love one of those just to put in the lounge when you're watching the telly and curl up and ah. Oh, do you not fancy that? Yeah, I mean, it looks like an enormous slipper, like a folded yeah, marketable yeah. slipper that you just get into. <laughs> I think, it again, we've said this before with other items, it's the sort of thing you want to go and visit someone's house and they've got one and you say, oh, what's this? And you play with it for 10 minutes and then you leave. I don't yeah. think I'd actually want one in my house. But it would be remember fun that, to experience one. You remember that giant beanbag, which I always vowed to get one day? Yes. I, I, I still fancy one of those, which is a very similar idea. But It's like a beanbag, but it's just giant. And you just then shape it into whatever you want and sit in it. And, yeah, modern kind of... Anyway, there you go. Uh, how, if you don't know what we're talking about, I put that post in the MeWe group, so go and have a look at it. You can't miss it. It's, it's a big green chair with an Asian-looking girl sitting in it. Really, really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth Williams is carrying on the carrying on camping. <laughs> He's hey. back with more camping palaver. And I used the term palaver this time because he's not very happy with his GV Pro Action folding table, £45 from Argos. Gareth says, I got this to go in the tent's kitchen. I picked up the GV Pro Action foldable camping table. However, this is what happens when you don't research before buying. Poor planning often leads to less positive results. He says, it's flimsy, overpriced and ultimately deemed unfit for my requirements. It is height adjustable and it does fold, making it relatively transportable, but it's simply not up to the desired quality that will be replaced and will be replaced before the next trip. Wholly unsuitable as a preparation table and less so as an actual camping dining table. Avoid. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly Gareth is an experienced um, professional camper and knows what he's talking about. So um, I'm sorry that didn't suit your needs, sir. It'll probably go really well with those chairs I was talking about earlier. <laughs> that my dad fell off of. Yes. <laughs> put, put this table and those chairs together and you'll be away. Then you really, you would have to carry on camping then, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. 45 quid thrown down the toilet at Argos. There you go. Sometimes you haven't got time to just research things, as, as yeah. things as Gareth says. Um, okay, another item for Room 101 is from Jeremy Harpham. And he's placed... Do we, I think we do this every year, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. <laughs> Christmas in August, he says. He took this picture, which is, again, in the MeWe group, for those that want to track it down, on the 26th of August at the local Morrison, stores, uh, Morrison store. And they couldn't even wait till September, he says. So there's a, a photograph of mince pies, um, of tons <laughs> of them all over the shelf, and, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Christmas stuff in August. <laughs> I love mince pies. If I wasn't on this health kick, I would be down to his local Morrison's <laughs> buying some. But, yeah, I concur. It, it does. It seems to get earlier and earlier every year. I don't yeah. suppose it does. I reckon it's sort of mid, late August most years that Christmas starts to appear. But um, it does seem a bit barking, doesn't it? Can you not buy mince pies year round then? Is that what if you fancy a mince pie in in April? Oh could yeah, you not I get mean, one? as as as, a, as right. a Santa, I know that there are sources online of buying anything Christmassy at any time okay. of the year. I had to buy somebody a Christmas pudding once in the middle of summer as a thank you gift, and I managed to find one. But um, no, I, I Talk, go on. Talking of, talking of which, down the bottom there, I think there are Christmas puddings. Yeah. Yes, yes, but yeah. I so yeah online throughout the year for sure. But I'm not sure about when they officially should go into stores. I suppose when the store, when the area of the store that's designated for the Christmas stuff suddenly becomes available, you don't want empty shelves in a shop, do you? So What's that thing at the top? Oh, Stollen. That's very Christmassy. Stollen, isn't it? Oh, Christmas Stollen, that's German. Yes, very nice. Yeah, yeah. You so, see, you're, so, not, you're now that, studying the picture with a fine-tooth comb. <laughs> that, that, whole, that whole shelf is clearly very Christmassy. <laughs> you see, it's working. You're turned on to the Christmas spirit. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Jeremy Harpham again. 
on Morrison's again. Ah. Recycling, this time a gold star. I'd like to nominate my local Morrison's for a gold star, says Jeremy, who have recently started taking in any plastic non-food wrapping for recycling. Think of the plastic around toilet rolls, plastic trays, crisp packets, etc. Yeah, that's the sort of plastic, I know that, that, that often hasn't been able to be re re um, recycled and people refuse to take it. This is great, he says, as our local council doesn't take this stuff and we have fortnightly bin collections. I don't know if Morrison's does this across the country though. I haven't seen it at our local Sainsbury's, Asda, Lidl or Tesco, so kudos to Morrison's. So yeah, Morrison's are accepting that crinkly sort of plastic wrappers from, uh, you know, celebration suites and plastic bags that we ain't been able to throw away before. Oddly, says Jeremy, I seem to have nominated Morrison's for a gold star and a room 101. <laughs> In the same episode, do they cancel each other out? <laughs> no, but we could play both jingles at the same time. Good grief. Hmm, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, OK. The, 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 the knock-on conversation about this was... Uh, I mean, my, my experience of this was that in North Wales, in my county, they do indeed allow you to put you know things like he's listed there into the black bin um, and they take it away in the black bin other counties it seems don't someone else chipped in and said they've seen this thing at their local tesco and it's been there for quite some time maybe morrison's have just got on board with it right but but also other people were saying that their county like jeremy's don't allow that so i think it depends very much on the local council by the looks of it and um who does what and what they allow and what the rules are but if they don't allow it then yes i agree good for morrison's and anyone else that's doing that here here and just an afterthought i thought that the black bin you could put anything in the black bin the black bin was everything that can't be recycled that you want to get rid of it doesn't matter chuck it in here no well not in not in conway it isn't i mean for example you can't put batteries in there Oh, sorry. Um, yes. Uh, not specialists. Sharps and batteries okay. and stuff. Yeah. But anything that's that's not got any kind of danger attached. Well, uh, in North Wales, you, you can put anything into the black bin pretty much that is not in that, that that doesn't comply with the other bins so it's not glass and it's not it's not paper and it's not cardboard and it's not yes, all those that's yeah right. yes, yes so same so, here. so if if you find something else that is not one of those things then i think you can put it in the black bin yeah. but I, I, it, clearly it seems that some councils don't allow that yeah, I tell you what, we've just had a fabulous new recycling centre opened. Not far right. at all, just a couple of miles up the road. Really nice, clean and well laid out and efficient and, and uh, for a change, very friendly, helpful, nice, kind people running it and working at it. And they have a shop because stuff that's taken there that's deemed too good to chuck, they clean up and put in a little store and make a bit of money for charity on the side. Um, yeah, just thought Sounds I'd throw that great. one in. Welling Garden City, ladies and gentlemen, anywhere within it, within reach, go and check out the Recycling Centre at Welling Garden City. I give it a gold star. There, another gold star from me. Recycling Centre in Welling Garden City. Done. Do they wear green uniforms? Do they what? Do they wear green uniforms? No, I don't think they do wear green uniforms. Why? Hmm, that's no good. It's, <laughs> Be re the recycling colour, wouldn't it? I see. Yes, Ted. Shall we wrap it up? <laughs> oh, good grief, it's hard work, isn't it? Um, we'll be back in two weeks' time with another show. I think we're done here <laughs> oh, today. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and um, we'll be back with lots of fun and all the merriment that we normally churn out like relentlessly. Um, Whateverworks.works is where you'll find our website that we talked about earlier in the show. TedSalmon.com is where you'll find me and everything I do. Links to audio podcasts and all the MeWe groups that we run. Do come and join us. Let us know whatever works in your life and we shall certainly bring the highlights of that to shows to come. AidenBell.com is where you'll find Aiden. And I think we're done. Have you... Did you hear the, the lawnmower going around just now? I didn't hear a lawnmower. I heard several trains go by and I resisted the temptation to say anything. Um, <laughs> First, please. I think we're all done. I think we've had no mulching this week, but there we are. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> See you all next time, everybody. Indeed. Uh, one last thing to say. Don't forget, whatever, whatever works, works. works.